Hello, and thanks for joining me for today's video message. Each week for over a year now, I've produced these weekly video messages to help people grow in their understanding of the Bible and their relationship with God. These videos are possible because of the financial gifts that many people send to support this ministry. And I want you to know how deeply grateful I am for your support. So thank you. Thank you for giving me a bit of your time in viewing today's message. And thank you for your support. And speaking of support, when I think back on my life as a youngster, I'm grateful for the support that I've received in education and personal development from teachers, mentors, and coaches. Nearly everybody can look back on their childhood and remember a favorite teacher or mentor. My favorite Sunday school teacher taught me during my fifth and sixth grade school years. Her name was Mrs. Evelyn Cisna. Mrs. Cisna's husband, Jack, was a successful Seattle attorney. Together with their children, they lived in a castle on the shoreline of the Puget Sound. Mrs. Cisna awarded the most amazing prizes for scripture memory and for our participation in service and mission projects. And outside of Sunday school, she and her husband took us on bike rides and exploratory adventures. Now, my favorite grade school teacher was during my fourth grade year. Her name was Mrs. Flock. Mrs. Flock made learning fun. She taught our class drama and the arts, and I was the cowardly lion in a production of The Wizard of Oz. And she led our class to win the all-school spelling bee with words such as lepidoptera. That's the one that I used to win that particular spelling bee. Lepidoptera. I can still remember it as though it was yesterday. L-E-P-I-D-O-P-T-E-R-A. Lepidoptera. And when asked if I knew what the meaning of that word was, I knew right away. It meant a large order of insects that includes moths and butterflies. My favorite teacher in junior high was Miss Phyllis Mackey. Miss Mackey taught typing, and every boy that I knew in junior high school was smitten with her beauty and her charm. I took typing just to be in her class, and I wasn't alone. A good number of other boys took typing, too. In fact, there were more boys in my 8th grade typing class than girls. Imagine that way back then. I took a second year of typing, too. Yeah, but as far as the romance goes, Miss Mackey was off limits. But I'll never forget what she wrote in my ninth grade annual. Mark, you are one of the outstanding ninth grade guys, still sweet, kind, considerate, intelligent, handsome, etc., etc., etc. Don't ever change, okay? I'll miss you next year. Have a neat summer, Phyllis Mackey. Ah, oh, <laughs> what a heartthrob. My favorite teacher in high school was Mr. Wayne Butch Sensenbaugh. Mr. Sensenbaugh was my math teacher and wrestling coach all through my high school years. It was because of his guidance that I excelled in math and placed second in the state of Washington in my weight class for freestyle wrestling. That was in 1974, shortly before I left to spend a year of study as a Rotary Exchange student in the Philippines. Butch Sensenbaugh was also one of my groomsmen at Wendy's and my wedding in 1979. He holds a special place in my heart to this very day. I'm sure that many of you viewing this message can think of a favorite teacher or mentor that you've had in the past, too. Today's scripture reading prompted me to think back on some of these favorite teachers and mentors in my life. From Isaiah chapter 50, verses 4 and 5, we read these words. The Lord and King has taught me what to say. He has taught me how to help those who are tired. He wakes me up every morning. He makes me want to listen like a good student. The Lord and King has unplugged my ears. I've always obeyed Him. I haven't turned away from Him. Did you notice that sentence at the end of verse 4? He makes me want to listen like a good student. You know, there were many who thought of Jesus as a great teacher. 
Some even proclaim him as the greatest teacher who has ever lived. And this is what brought people to come out in droves to hear him speak or to hear him teach. Let's listen to just a few of the dozens of passages from the Bible that identify Jesus as a great teacher. In Mark's Gospel, chapter 6, verses 1 and 2, we read these words. Jesus went to his hometown of Nazareth. His disciples went with him. When the Sabbath day came, he began to teach in the synagogue. Many who heard him were amazed. Where did this man get these things? they asked. What's this wisdom that has been given to him? He even does miracles. And in Luke's Gospel, chapter 7, verse 40, Jesus answered and said to him, Simon, I have something to say to you. So Simon said, Teacher, say it. And John, chapter 1, verse 38 says, Then Jesus turned and, seeing them following, said to them, What do you seek? And they said to him, Rabbi, which is to say when translated teacher, where are you staying? And in the third chapter of John, verse 2, this man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. In the 20th chapter of John, verse 16, Jesus said to her, Mary, she turned and said to him, Rabboni, which is to say teacher. So if Jesus were considered such a great teacher, why did he suffer abandon from some of his very own? For example, in his hometown of Nazareth in Mark's Gospel, his hometown folk turned angrily against him and sought to kill him by throwing him off the edge of a cliff. Or his own family for a period of time thought that he was crazy and had lost his mind because he spent so much time teaching, healing, and ministering to people. Or the crowd who lined the streets outside Jerusalem to greet him as he made his entry on what we celebrate this weekend as Palm Sunday. And yet that same crowd, just a few days afterward, were nowhere around when a great crowd of people cried out and demanded that Jesus be killed. Crucify him! Crucify him, they cried. And with his own disciples who abandoned him in the Garden of Gethsemane, the night he was betrayed, arrested, and taken away. Why was Jesus abandoned from his very closest disciples if they thought of him as such a great teacher from God? Another question that comes to my mind is this. Why at times do we abandon Jesus? if we agree that he is a great teacher from God. We also abandon him when we turn away from his teachings and when we act in ways that are out of line with his example. It seems to me that we would be much better off to treat our relationship with Jesus at the very least like that of a junior high school boy who finds admiration for his typing instructor, or that of a high schooler who is eternally grateful for his math teacher and wrestling coach. In other words, may we think often and fondly of Jesus each and every day. May we find ways to come alongside him just because we long to be near him. May we do our very best to honor Jesus by the manner in which we conduct our lives. May it never be said that we would choose to abandon the teachings or the principles of Jesus, one who is considered by so many as the greatest teacher who ever lived. In fact, may we live our lives such that this text from the prophet Isaiah is true of us in our relationship with Jesus. That text from the 50th chapter of Isaiah, verses 4 and 5. The Lord and King has taught me what to say. He has taught me how to help those who are tired. He wakes me up every morning. He makes me want to listen like a good student. The Lord and King has unplugged my ears. I've always obeyed Him. I haven't turned away from Him. Let us never turn away. 
from Jesus Christ. Let us seek to become more and more like him, that in doing so, we would honor the Creator God by the manner in which we live. Please join me in prayer. Our God, we thank you for the opportunity we have had this day to read from your word and to receive guidance from your word. Help us to be people of honor, people who would put you first and foremost in our lives, people who would choose to think upon the teachings and actions of Jesus Christ and so seek to emulate them in our own lives too. Help us in this way, God, to be a blessing to others in life as well as to be a blessing to you. God, we pray this for your glory, for the benefit of so many of your people in this world. And we pray this in Jesus' precious name. Amen.